the James Webb Space Telescope has investigated farther than ever before. At the farthest edge of the universe we can see, it discovered something that motivates us to rethink what we thought we knew. That is more than merely a finding. It's a look into a cosmic place we weren't supposed to see. The limit of our ability to observe and why it is present. The observable universe has no real border. It is not a cosmic barrier keeping us inside. It's like the farthest you can see at sea, where the view stops. The ocean does not end, but your eyes can't see any farther. That view is dependent for us on how far light has traveled since time began. The universe is about 13.8 billion years old. You may believe that means the margin ought to be 13.8 billion light years away, but space doesn't work in this way. As light travels toward us, space itself is expanding. This expansion has pushed galaxies far away, significantly more than where they were when that light started its trip. Currently, those same galaxies might be more than 46 billion light years away. That's why the whole observable universe is about 93 billion light years across. When we look at these far off galaxies, we're not just looking across huge distances. We are taking a look back in time. Some of the faint light Webb sees started, its trip when the universe was very young. Beyond this limit is the unobservable universe, the huge areas whose light hasn't had time to get to us. We don't know what's in the world, a lot more galaxies, huge cosmic things, or even something more bizarre. As Jan Levin, an astrophysicist, said, the universe doesn't have to make sense to us. However, we continue to try to learn because the more we learn about the edge, the more we wonder what lies beyond. The James Webb Space Telescope comes in to help with that. It is not only a telescope. It travels back in time. Unlike Hubble, which can only see light and ultraviolet light, Webb is good at recognizing infrared light. That's vital because the universe's expansion turns light from distant galaxies red. By the time it reaches us, we can't see it, but Webb can. When Webb first looked, it saw galaxies deep in space that formed just 300 million years after the Big Bang, our earliest recollection spotted. Even better, Webb displayed 44 completely unknown galaxies in one survey, unnoticed by other instruments. These weren't faint smudges. They were busy making stars in a time when we thought it was too early for that. This was possible because Webb recognizes the light that has been moving for billions of years, extended by the universe's growth, similar to hearing a whisper that started right after creation and is just now reaching you. Scientists quickly realize that denser and faster-growing galaxies were emerging than what our models predicted, as NASA's Jane Rigby said after seeing the first images. We're looking at the universe waving a sign reading, You don't know what I can do she said. And if Webb can show us so much inside the observable universe, what clues might it describe about what lies beyond? When it comes to altering how we perceive the universe, Michio Kaku frequently has to say something both exciting and alarming. The chance that life exists at the very edge of the universe that can be seen, not only tiny, life but smart civilizations, possibly even older and more sophisticated than us by thousands or billions of years. Kaku mixes physics with thinking about big concepts. One of his ideas is about cosmic consciousness, the thought that the universe itself may be aware. The world may be stranger than we imagine. He's compared it to the Matrix, suggesting that what we see as real might just be a simulation. If so, our universe may be a single program among many, each contributing to a broader cosmic setup. This isn't a new idea. Ancient thinkers like Plato wondered if the world we see actually exists or is just a shadow of something deeper. In that way, today's science is following a path that has been used by thousands of people for many years. Now, instead of debates, by candlelight, we have telescopes. But Kaku connects his ideas to science we can measure. He says that if life grew over several worlds and billions of years, it's possible that some of those civilizations reached technological levels we can. Hardly imagine. 
If any of them ever figured out how to make the most of their galaxy, something called a Type Three civilization, they might not just reach, but explore their own universe into others. The observable's outermost edge makes the universe an interesting discussion. We can't see any other way, but that doesn't mean nothing is there. If Kaku is right, the limits of what we can see could signal the beginning of someone else's area. If cosmic consciousness exists, then perhaps our entire reality is merely a component of a larger existence. As Kaku said, we make music and dream, but maybe the dream is dreaming us. That idea is both poetic and alarming. It makes us think that the biggest mysteries aren't just out among the stars, but in what reality is. However, all of this dates back to a simple question. How do we test it? We can look for clues at this point. Strange things in the background radiation of the universe, strange patterns or signals from the galaxy that suggest activity beyond what nature can explain. As a result, we wonder if the observable universe is just the start. What's beyond that limit? If you could ride a light beam all the way to the edge of the universe, you might anticipate space, but you wouldn't hit a wall. You would just keep going. That's where the concept of an unobservable universe comes in, a place that might be hundreds of thousands of times bigger than what we can see. One possible explanation for this is cosmic inflation. Right after the Big Bang, the universe didn't. Just grow. It exploded in size faster than light. This doesn't go against the laws of physics because space was expanding itself. Nothing's moving through it. Inflation would have pushed big areas of the universe far enough apart that their light can't reach us. Not now, and maybe not ever. Some say the real universe could be at least 10 over 23 times bigger than the observable one. That amount is staggering. It's hard to understand, but it implies there is room for things we cannot imagine. What possibilities are there? The simple response is more of the same. Planets, stars, galaxies, and possibly black holes. However, some scientists believe that, beyond the horizon, physics could be different. The rules of nature might not be the same as ours. Things we take for granted, like light speed or gravity, could be different there. If so, life there might be completely different from what we are aware of. Another thing is getting there. Even if we had unlimited time, our current technology is stuck because of the speed of light. Wormhole concepts provide hints at transcending both space and time, but they are just thoughts. They require energy that we have never seen. That does not imply they are not possible, but we are unable to carry them out now. The gap between what we are able to imagine and what we can test is key. We can imagine anything, but until we can see, measure, or travel, they're just ideas. However, history demonstrates that what seems impossible now is possible later. As Alan Guth, a physicist who assisted with the inflation theory, stated, the universe is everything, and yet we see so little of it. This demonstrates to us that the horizon is not the end. It all comes down to how far we can see right now. Utilizing resources like the James Webb Space Telescope, we're slowly pushing that limit. But what if we discover evidence of someone keeping an eye on us from beyond it? The search for another life becomes significant. The question, are we alone, has remained with us ever since we looked at the night sky. For a long time, it was just guessing. With telescopes such as James Webb, that question is beginning to be tested. The chances of different life existing are big. The observable universe has billions of galaxies with many billions of stars, the majority with planets. Even if a small number of those planets are in the right spot for liquid water, the number of worlds that could have life is huge. It seems remote that Earth is the only place with life. One of Webb's first discoveries was studying the enormous planet WASP-96b in our system of stars. It's not like Earth, but Webb's instruments discovered water vapor in its air along with Clouds that scientists didn't expect. This displayed that Webb could read and view exoplanets' air. Why is that key? Because oxygen and other chemicals could point to life. They wouldn't prove life, but it would. Encourage us to look closer. 
Thomas Zurbuchen of NASA said, if we find life out there, it will modify everything. There's a second point. Webb has been looking into discovering galaxies in the early universe that formed soon after the Big Bang. This means that the settings for star systems could have been prepared earlier than we thought. If life began so early somewhere else, it could have had billions of years to expand beyond our species. Of course, there's a jump between finding a world with the potential for life and evidence that something lives there. For now, the search involves making a list of planets that might be alive, most likely empty, but only one can respond to the inquiry. Additionally, life does not have to mean finding something we recognize. Alien life could be very small, chemical, or distinctive from ours. It might live under ice or in thick clouds in places that would be deadly to us. Webb's mission is to demonstrate those strange places. This research results in a bigger question. If there is life elsewhere, what kind of universe are we in? Is it just one big place for life? Or might there be a number of universes, each with distinct ways of life? That's where the idea of the multiverse comes in. The multiverse sounds like science fiction, but scientists have studied it. The idea is that our one universe might exist like both foam and bubbles. Each bubble might contain its own stars and its own rules of physics. One approach to considering the multiverse is quantum mechanics. In the many worlds interpretation, every result of every occurrence is unique in universes. When a coin is e flipped, it lands in one universe with a head and in another with a tail. If you apply that idea to the entire universe, you can imagine parallel realities. Inflation in space-time theory also suggests a similar thing. If the expansion following... The Big Bang wasn't merely one instance, but something that happens in different places at different times. It may cause numerous bubble universes. Some might be like ours, others may be different. Some question if we can even test the multiverse. If other universes are separate, we might be unable to communicate with them. But some scientists have considered clues in the cosmic microwave. Background lights patterns, strange movements of galaxies, or physical things that cannot be explained, which may imply that we are part of a larger system. For many physicists, the multiverse makes sense, because it might help you understand why the rules of nature are perfectly set for life to exist. If there are many universes with different things, it shouldn't come as a surprise that one, ours, has the ideal combination for life. As Nobel winner Steven Weinberg said, the more the universe seems understandable, the more pointless it seems unless we're merely in one of many. James Webb isn't meant to find parallel universes, but it could still fuel the discussion by looking deeper than ever. It might find things that support or question the multiverse's assumptions and theories. For example, if Webb's images show strange things, some scientists might take them as signs of other cosmic bubbles. Whether or not there is a multiverse, it just alters how we perceive ourselves. If it's true, we're not just a tiny speck in one universe, but a small part of everything. If that's the case, the search for life might not just be about other stars, but other universes. If a multiverse is real, then forces beyond our vision may encompass more than imagination. This connects to what's called dark flow. In 2008, researchers noticed something odd. By studying galaxy clusters, they saw that many were advancing in the same direction more quickly than expected. It looked like something beyond the observable. Universe was pulling on them. This was named dark flow. Clusters of galaxies ought to be moving in every direction, influenced by what we see. However, data suggested that something else was pulling, something we are unable to see. One thought is that the dark flow is from things outside our reach. These could be galaxies in superclusters or even something formed right after the Big Bang. Some even believe that dark flow could be another universe touching ours. Contrary to popular belief, dark flow's reality is questioned. Later studies have doubted whether it exists, but it's hard to ignore because it goes beyond what we can see. If dark flow really exists, it would imply that our universe belongs to something bigger. Additionally, it would add questions about what else might 
Be out there. As researcher Alexander Kashlinsky declared, whatever is out there is not part of our observable universe, but it's influencing us. If galaxy clusters can be pulled by forces, what else might be out there? Black holes are regions where gravity is so strong that there is no way out. They emerge when stars perish. There are a lot of huge black holes at galaxy centers. For years, black holes were merely concepts. We now have seen them in the universe's early days. Webb spotted supermassive black holes that shouldn't exist so soon after the Big Bang. If these exist in our universe, there may be additional resources beyond our horizon. Out there, they could even be ports of entry to other regions. If you could see the universe with no light, you'd observe how dark matter shaped it. It makes up 85% of all matter, but doesn't interact with light. We know it's there because of its gravity. Galaxies spin faster than they should. Its nature is a mystery. It might be particles we have not observed. Dark matter mapping could reveal things that are hidden, maybe even connections to the unobservable universe. If areas beyond our horizon are abundant in dark matter, they may be influencing us. As Vera Rubin stated, we are not made of most of the matter in the universe. Web-based tools like the James Webb Space Telescope are still new, but they're changing how we think. Its function is to push the boundaries of what can be seen. Future surveys will look farther than ever before. What comes after Webb might be even better. Future telescopes could take us closer to the actual edge. The more we observe, the more we realize how much we don't know. As Carl Sagan said, something incredible is waiting to be known. With Webb, we may be close to making it. The border is not the end. It's the beginning of the questions. We've reached the end of our capabilities, but not what is actually there.